So welcome to the MKL part. I think it's a short overview to give you an impression what MKL does and what uh, execution modes exist. So the plan for this talk here is to actually give you an overview what MKL does because most people think, oh well, it's a BLAS uh, interface and you can ca uh, calculate or play around with matrices. And uh, then we will have a look, a look at the support uh, for the mic architecture. And these execution modes are already shown on, on the slide. There is a new one we haven't seen so far. I will introduce that a little bit uh, more. And then we have some, not performance numbers, it's a kind of a misleading thing. We will see what it is. And then I will tell you the, the, the things where we ask you to help us to evaluate what the, or to prioritize what should be the next piece in, in the huge stack of functionality within M M M MKL which should be optimized for your case. So I will put up a list of functions that are already uh, kind of great and some that are on the plan and some that are not so great. And uh, yeah, I think then we can step into the hands-on lab. So as you can see, the MKL not just supports the linear algebra with BLAS, LAPEC, the sparse solvers like Paradiso, and the scalar pack. They also have the FFTs, 1D, 2D, 3D, and cluster FFTs as well. So if, if your stuff is just dominated by these use cases, you don't even need to deal with MPI to go across a single node. So M MKL will do this for you and the support currently builds up to, to use the MPI facilities on mic architecture and things like this. This is basically this block. There is something might be interesting if you have difficulties to vectorize. These are kind of functions that take a range of, uh, basically an array or a pointer, uh, however you call it, and uh, it is perfectly, I would say, uh, perfectly vectorized underneath. So you, you have kind of functionality beha that behaves like intrinsics or something like this. And uh, you have a variety of functions, even not so common things, things you, you cannot find in, in, in the math layer for C or something like this, certain transcendental functions and, and so on. And there are facilities for, for uh, parallelized random number generation and uh, yeah, May maybe also important, they also gain the hardware support as, as hardware supports certain things. MKL is always enabled to the latest Intel architecture and once this architecture fades out, out in ter terms of being current, it just remains as it was until you find a bug or a performance uh, drop a hit or something else. So for example, for the uh, vector random number generation, uh, there will be support for, uh, what is it actually? Yeah, for the current Ivy Bridge, they have instructions for, for random number generation. That's already in there. And uh, there is also summary statistics and things like this included and a little bit of data fitting. That, that's basically the, the range of functionality that's uh, given by MKL. And uh, the next slide will, will tell you what the support is on the mic side. So you can see it's a mixture of an introduction for this 512-bit SIMD wide instruction things. Of course, the, the team enables that as they go, as you request it, but it's already there. So the mic support is in the beta product. We basically call it MKL 11 beta. So the, M the, the mic support is built into the MKL 11. That's the basic uh, answer here. And there are three usage models maybe called modes uh, that you can use with MKL. There is basically a very free one, uh, one that doesn't require any or almost no effort to use a few of these enabled functions. It's called automatic offload. We sometimes uh, shortcut it and call it AO for automatic offload. That's basically, yeah, I will introduce it on the next slide. Then we, we have what we already know uh, as the offload support from the compiler uh, called compiler-assisted offload. That 
so why do I put something on the, uh, the table like OMKL oh, supports that? Uh, what I like to say here is it doesn't interfere with automatic offload. It just works. You can do or you can use both things at the same time as you like. That, that is basically uh, the message on this slide. So it, it just works. Basically, we worked it out. We had issues in the beginning, of course, because people tried to mix it up. Now that's all resolved. resolved. And then there is a third mode we, we already know about that. Sometimes it's called native execution, but I already cleaned it up. Uh, I, I call it many core hosted now in this slide deck at least. But basically, it's a compile an MKL that is compiled for Mike dash m Mike in terms of the compiler. Uh, we we saw the options for that, and this is also uh, what what's used when you offload and call MKL from an offloaded section. Basically, you link against the uh, dash m Mike version of MKL. That that's the uh, basic usage model here. Okay, let's have a look, a closer look actually at these three models. You can see the automatic offload um, doesn't require any code change. You just call in a, a system or a, a enabling function or a system facility uh, from the MKL uh, system header where you adjust certain things and then it just works for, for a few AO enabled functions and it the interesting part with that is it is a heterogeneous uh, execution mode I will give you more background on that so you can use the host and the mic device at the same time and the the MKL doesn't own, uh, not just do that th does this it also balances or it knows about how, how much code needs to run or how much problem size need to, to stay on the uh, host system and how much is worth offloading and things like this. And uh, yeah, the compiler assisted offload just works. You get it already. You can, if you have custom functionality that is not included in the, into the automatic offload, you can basically build that yourself and wrap it up with the right uh, offload pragmas. You can also use things like uh, problem or array please stay on the card so that if you re-enter the offload an, another offloaded section you can just reuse the existing uh, stuff and uh, I'll show an example for that and of course there is the many core hosted execution here's just a reminder uh, on the execution models of Mike and I just put the execution modes that MKL supports into it as a little star. You can see there is the classic thing you already know that's the MKL host side or the Xeon, the classic Xeon side. Then you have the automatic offload and the uh, compiler assisted offload at this position, at the offload position, close to the symmetric balanced mode. And then we have this many core hosted side and some variety or some balance in between. So, so you can uh, yeah, it's fairly present for all of these three uh, execution schemes. Here are the automatic offload in detail. Um, the MKL decides to do everything automatic, a as a default at least, and you can adjust a few, few things. And uh, you can fine tune on a different uh, level, I would say, by adjusting these, these uh, automatic decisions if you want. So the beginning or the first step is just to call MKL mic enable somehow in your main uh, unit or in some of the translation units, whatever, or to set this environment variable over there. And uh, then you enable the automatic offload, the heterogeneous execution mode, uh, yeah, for a few of the functions that support the automatic offload. And of course you have the fallback for, for that. If, if, the, uh, if the actual system doesn't have a card, you, you can just, you fall back to the host and that's it. Here is the detail for the enabled functions, a little bit short, so if you say, well, I would like to see this or that function, 
you can give us a hint on that. But so far, we have three of the plus functions enabled for automatic offload. Not that much, but maybe the important ones. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically, that's it. And uh, we also plan to expand it, of course, with every future update, maybe not every future single update, but basically we plan to extend it into the lay pack. So here is the detail uh, to call it or to enable it function-wise or to enable it uh, by setting an environment variable. <coughs> you basically see there is an MKL set work division function that takes a, a value between 0 and 1. And uh, there is a different uh, or there is the corresponding environment variable for that that just takes integers so you need to take care Th these are already percentages and these are you know fractions and uh, if you know that uh, you get it right otherwise you you may see funny behavior out of this basically you can also misuse that set work division function to disable the mic support again because we had the question, oh, so now that I enabled uh, the mic offload or automatic offload, so how, how to disable this? And we also had customers that asked, oh, I would like to have it, but I would like to disable it for this specific case from case to case. Can, can I do this? Can I do it just before calling into the function? And it's weird. I mean, there is now a function to disable the mic support. So. There is a corresponding thing I will show you on the next slide. Basically, this is what we did before. I put it in braces because it's kind of outdated now. You misused the set work division and set the work division for the mic card to zero or for, for some of the mic card or particular mic card. Now we have an MKL mic disable. Yeah, few details. You can see it's not beneficial to do an offload for smaller problem sizes you can see they are reasonable large until it really is a, uh, until you get some satisfaction out of it you know you see it for the uh, gem case you need a 2k by 2k matrix to make that uh, to pay off um, what you shouldn't forget about this is it sounds like oh well, it's, it sounds not very useful to have this offload at all because it needs to be that large it's not true you, you shouldn't forget automatic offload just requires you to call a single function in the main and then it works and you can fix it up with compiler assisted offload in various ways you could uh, make that the, ma that the work or the data stays on the card and you could still re-enter the offloaded area again and that pays off that gives you better efficiency this AO functionality copies in and copies out every time you call that AO enabled function. Therefore, you need a certain problem size. That, that, that's the basic truth. So there is no magic here. As you can see, these set work division thing and all of these system uh, facility functions are prepared for multiple mic cards and things like this. So you can pass in what you would like to adjust if you talk, talk about the host system or the mic card and which one and things like this. So you can adjust the work division. Yeah, here are some tips for the automatic offload. Um, I just fix it up. I wanted to show an example to explicitly, explicitly uh, set the affinity for a process list. Maybe 200 uh, threads here, 50 cores as an example. Um, but you can even get it better. You, you saw it yesterday. You write K, mic KMP affinity, not maybe not explicit. You, you can say, uh, you can leave it out and say granularity equals fine or core, depends on what you want to like uh, to do, and comma, and then you say balance. That's another example. You, can, you should also pin the host, the host system because for in case of the automatic offload, we, we talk about heterogeneous uh, execution. So both things will be used. So it's still, it's also important to, to use the affinity uh, on the host side. And there you have the usual fine compact 1.0 kind of thing as a starting point. 
maybe something that's implicitly, I forgot the star in this middle part, that's implicitly assumed. The, the, the basic idea with adjusting the runtime environment is all the host side environment is replicated to the mic side. But sometimes it doesn't make sense to have the same value on the mic side because they are slightly <laughs> different. So you can set a mic, you can define an, a user-defined prefix for your environment variables. <laughs> Usually it's mic. You leave out the underscore please and then you put in the prefix underscore and then the typical name of the host uh, environment variable and then you can adjust it individually for the mic side. That's basically how it works for the OMP num threads. You can replace it as you like. You can also say MKL num threads, you know, they built, they, they mirrored the whole OpenMP stuff in, in MKL again to have another level of decision here. And there is the mic KMP affinity, something that, that here in the middle is also assuming the prefix maybe. There is the compiler assisted offload. I mean, there is not much to say other than it works as you, as you already know. So therefore, I think we step right into the example. Again, it's calling the Fortran interface exposed as a C function. Therefore, the argument of the C example is twiddled. Happily, we have square matrices and we want to multiply A times B. So we pass B A. That's just as the hint. But the other stuff is just a reminder how the offload uh, facility works. You, you had several exercises and activities uh, yesterday. So you copy in and you copy out. And here is a hint on uh, to have it staying on the card. So if you re-enter that, you, you, you already have it and you don't need to allocate and transfer or whatever. So this is the way you can customize the performance over to, to, to get better than automatic offload. The automatic offload that's basically for few cases for the most important functions right now and also uh, without any effort. That's not the case here but not much effort. For the Fortran uh, friends here is the same example uh, in Fortran but you can see it's untwiddled because it's the expected majorness of the data behind. Okay, and of course it's uh, yeah slightly different uh, syntax, of course, because of Fortran for the for, uh, for the offload pragma or directives here. It's a little bit uh, small. You can look it up at home. This is a fully fledged example, not really split across multiple slides to to have some data persistence using the compiler assisted offload. I think we don't want to go through source code at this point, so. You can look at this uh, later to, to get something out of it. Here is an, uh, a few tips to get something better out of the compiler assisted offload. It's basically the same uh, as we had with the automatic offload. You, you, you should tune uh, the affinity. Uh, you have the, the same knobs for that. And we, we heard yesterday in Michael Clem's memory session, there are also things like these to MAC buffers to have larger page sizes. You can adjust uh, a, a certain, I would say, threshold until the larger page sizes are used. Uh, used. This is basically the adjustment. It, you, you, the number or the value for that environment variable is the threshold until large page sizes are used. That, that's basically, <laughs> it's a little bit, yeah. It also implicitly assumes the mic prefix, the, the mic nth prefix. Okay, let's have a look at the, or compare the automatic offload, the compiler assisted offload, or just, as I said, they work together. So you can mix it within the same program. It doesn't interfere in a bad way or something like this. And of course, to summarize, you have the many core hosted execution this is something for the initial port. If you have a huge uh, application, then you might go with that and you can just link against the MKL. The only thing is it basically links the same way as on the regular Xeon side. You just adjust the, the linker path or where the libraries are found. This is basically, we will see it in the 
make files or in the examples we saw it already. Of course, this is fairly trivial. I mean, uh, this is just uh, some hints on uh, choosing one model or another. You, I think you already know what to do in which of the cases, so I don't have to go through this in, in a very large detail. Here are some of the examples how to link against MKL. You know, MKL linkage was always a kind of a support issue for us working uh, on the technical consulting side because people always had issues. You know, we have different flavors of the library, some that are static, some that even statically link against the, the threading layer. We have single threaded versions. Uh, we have versions that are dynamically linked and then we have some of them for different uh, uh, threading runtimes, PGI threading runtime, our Intel OpenMP and others. And uh, there are also flavors for the bit uh, for the bitness of the integers, you know, for the index space, you can get, bump it up to 64-bit indices to, if you have really huge problem sizes. There are different flavors, there are different versions of MKL available. Um, things that is this kind of uh, impression here is, or are, that you have a website, just type into the Google search uh, something like, uh, yeah, this is a link line advisor. Just type link line advisor MKL, you will get to a page, and there you can just select, oh, I have a PGI compiler, I use this, oh, of course, no. And then you can adjust and copy and paste the link line, and then you get something crazy like shown at the bottom of this slide. You basically built a group for stupid linkers to not, to have a certain ordering and things like this. Here you can see the LP64 interface linked this is the small integer thing. These are 32-bit integers or index space, even on a 64-bit uh, machine. This is basically the, the way it works with MKL. And of course, there are even more versions of these libraries, including cluster support and, and, uh, and so forth. Maybe. Performance, I said, it is a little bit misleading, this slide. It's not about performance numbers uh, or the targets we have and the comparison to the competitors. That's all interesting. You can do it yourself if you have a card available. But basically, we tell you already what we all optimize. And you may know it, it's a running target, so it increases. So we have plus level three and much of one and two already tuned for, for Mike. We have the sparse plus, two function instances here are tuned for the mic side. I tried some of these things myself. The CSR matrix uh, vector multiplication is something I tried myself on mic. And uh, the, these Cholesky LU and QR factorization are tuned and their FFTs are pretty important. You know, all these guys with uh, certain kind of solvers or with stencils or oil gas stuff. They rely on FFT, so it uh, is fairly well tuned and also a running target, I think. And there is this VML facility. Uh, these, as I said, you pass in a pointer and you get perfectly vectorized code for, uh, for certain transcendental or higher order functions, something like this. And uh, there are the random number generators. Three instances of them are tuned and the, the discrete and the uniform, uh, sorry, the discrete uniform and the geometric uh, variant are also uh, available on the mic side in a tuned fashion. I think for the rest of the stuff, it is there, but likely the baseline or the fallback line of, of the code path within MKL is just compiled with uh, the necessary options and nothing beyond that. For, for the stuff mentioned here, it means some guy is sitting there auto-generates kernels, and not only that, also looks at different versions, different tilings, and explores the whole problem sizes that are possible with the entire memory space and things like this. So this is uh, really something you don't want to do. This is really, you would like to call that because it's, it's tuned already. And yeah. I think this is just talking about MKL random number generators. So it's not reflected or used within any of the 
existing C runtime libraries. So if you use a STL facility to generate something, um, it's not, not, not using MKL. There is no dependency between these libraries. So if you are curious to get it into something that you, using every, that you use every day, feel free to submit it into Boost, for example. We have several examples, kind of success examples, even simple things that help others. So for example, if you use Boost uh, Mooplas or the, the, this, this, the Blas library uh, that comes with Boost, you have an option to replace the overloads with MKL implementations. Some Okay. Yeah, so these are things on, on the agenda for the MKL team. Uh, of course, broader functionality, but it's also asking for your input and uh, some low priority things that have lo lower return of investment, as you can see uh, pointed out there. Something like Poisson library, the iterative sparse solvers, and the trust region algorithms. They are on the lower priority. If you want to uh, bump it up, feel free to do so. I think some of these limitations and issues are, are kind of resolved already. I think some of the stuff is on the fly. So most of the MKL components are supported on KNC as I said. Maybe sometimes it's just the baseline. And uh, stuff that's excluded is Scalar Pack cluster FFT and Poisson library, as, uh, as I already said. So basically, to summarize, the MPI stuff isn't there yet. It's because you can just use it now yourself. So the team with an MKL wasn't ready to have it tuned already and give it uh, to you and to work out of the box. So it's just, it just needs a little bit of time to, to resolve. If you have the uh, beta stuck installed, the, you, you can access the examples. You find them in the MKL root. And even on these local nodes, you can pick up additional examples of these kind of instances here. Execution modes are already shown on, on the slide. There is a new one we haven't seen so far. I will introduce that a little bit uh, more. And then we have some not performance numbers, it's a kind of a misleading thing. We will see what it is. And then I will tell you the, the, the things where we ask you to help us to evaluate what the, or to prioritize what should be the next piece in, in the huge stack of functionality within M M M MKL, which should be optimized for your case. So I will put up a list of functions that are already uh, kind of great and some that are on the plan. variety of functions even not so common things, things you, you cannot find in, in, in the math layer for C or something like this, certain transcendental functions and, and so on. And there are facilities for, for uh, parallelized random number generation. And uh, yeah, may, maybe also important, they also gain the hardware support as, as hardware supports certain things. MKL is always enabled to the latest Intel architecture, and once this architecture fades out, out in terms of being current, it just remains as it was until you find it. So welcome to the MKL part. I think it's a short overview to give you an impression what MKL does and what uh, execution modes exist. So the plan for this talk here is to actually give you an overview what MKL does because most people think oh well it's a BLAS uh, interface and you can uh, calculate or play around with matrices and uh, then we will have a look, a look at the support uh, for the mic architecture and these N and some that are not so great and uh, yeah I think then we can step into the hands-on lab so as you can see, the MKL not just supports the linear algebra with BLAS, LAPEC, the sparse solvers like Paradiso, and the scalar pack. They also have the FFTs, 1D, 2D, 3D, and cluster FFTs as well. 
So if, if your stuff is just dominated by these use cases, you don't even need to deal with MPI to go across a single node. So M MKL will do this for you, and the support currently builds up to, to use the MPI facilities on mic architecture and things like this. This is basically this block. There is something might be interesting if you have difficulties to vectorize. These are kind of functions that take a range of, uh, basically an array or a pointer, uh, however you call it, and uh, it is perfectly, I would say, uh, perfectly vectorized underneath. So you, you have kind of functionality that behaves like intrinsics or something like this, and uh, you have the